Do you make the same payments each month and wonder why you keep processing the same paperwork over and over again? It's a waste of time for your accounts payable team and it's a time waster for the folks requesting the payments. That's why in some organizations these payments are set up as recurring. But not everyone likes this approach as we'll discuss. We're going to address some of the problems recurring payments introduce into the payment process and then we're going to give you some best practices you can use to make sure these issues don't occur in your organization. To make sure we're all on the same page, let's start with a quick definition. What is a recurring payment? These are automatic payments authorized by the responsible party for prearranged scheduled payments so they do not have to submit an invoice or a payment request for each and every single payment. Usually these payments are monthly, but they can be weekly or quarterly or occasionally annually. And of course, they're all for the same dollar amount. Frequently, these payments are made on a credit card, but they do not have to be. Sometimes referring payments are also called subscription payments, although their use is far wider than just ordinary subscriptions. In the consumer space, for example, you might authorize Netflix to hit your credit card each month for their monthly subscription fee, or you might authorize your bank to debit your bank account each month for your mortgage payment. In fact, many consumer services insist on payment in this manner. There are similar applications in the business space. Actually, some small businesses pay many of their bills using this approach. How do recurring payments help accounts payable? This type of arrangement is especially attractive for low dollar transactions, especially if you have a lot of them, and it is a way to streamline the accounts payable function. It can eliminate many small dollar invoices from your process, freeing up your processes to spend more time on those larger, more complex invoices. Plus, if someone is unexpectedly out of the office for whatever reason, the payment still gets made without them initiating the necessary paperwork. This approach eliminates any worry about late fees, although I do realize that many mid-size and larger companies, as a matter of principle, do not pay late fees. So this may not be as big a deal, the late fee thing, for them. As you've probably guessed by now, it's not all roses and wine. Recurring payments come with their own unique set of headaches, just like everything else in accounts payable. What are the problems related to occurring payments? There are a few problems, including in the case of loans, the loan may be refinanced and no one tells accounts payable, so the payment on the old loan continues. In the case of a loan, the payments could continue after the loan has been paid off, especially if there was an early payoff. And again, no one told accounts payable. In the case of leases, think like copying machines, for example, a new or fancy model may have come out and have been sold to the company with the understanding that the old lease would be terminated. That's part of the agreement, an agreement that nobody tells accounts payable about. So the old payment continues along with the new one. The recurring payments continue after the service is no longer used, as the employee either stops using it or no longer needs the service. And again, no one thinks to notify accounts payable, so the payments continue. And five, the recurring payment continues after the person using the service is no longer an employee. And the employee may continue to use the service or not. It really doesn't matter unless that was part of a severance agreement, which it rarely is. In any case, the company shouldn't be making the payments. Now you may be thinking, well, we'll just get the money back when we discover it. But that's easier said than done. If you've ever tried to get recurring payments back, you know that it is often a battle that cannot be won. Yes, if the loan is paid off, the bank will in all likelihood return the extra payment. But good luck in getting the payment back for a subscription service. I fought, I fought that unwinnable battle to no avail, and it was really frustrating on top of everything else. The only leverage you might have is you can threaten to take your business to one of their competitors. But if it is a unique subscription service, as it was in the case of the battle I was fighting, you are at their mercy. So you're thinking, there must be some way to prevent this from happening. As mentioned earlier, some organizations take the route of just not allowing recurring payments. This is unfortunate because, as we've discussed, this can be a real time saver for everyone involved, not just accounts payable. There has to be a better way. There have to be some safeguards that you can put in place that you can build into the process to guard against the problems that we've been discussing. And there are. What are the best practices to, to prevent recurring payment headaches? Here are a few. Best practice number one, when setting up recurring payments in the beginning, an end date should always be included. This prevents payments from continuing after the obligation, say a loan has been met, but it does not address the, the issue of what happens when a loan is renegotiated or a lease 
is terminated early. Best practice number two, someone should review recurring payments each month, especially if they're on a credit card. This can be part of the regular credit card statement review. Best practice number three, at least annually, the responsible party for the transaction should confirm that the obligation is ongoing and that payment needs to continue. Some accounts payable departments send out a form, maybe in the form of an Excel spreadsheet, listing each responsible party's recurring payments, asking each responsible party to sign off, saying these recurring payments should continue. Now, before we get to the last few best practices, if you are getting value from this talk, I'd love it if you'd hit the like or the thumbs up button. It sends a message that you're getting value from this talk and I should make more like it. A personal thanks from me to everyone who liked this talk and has indicated so. Best practice number four. Some companies employ a policy of setting an end date of no more than 12 months after the payment stop, starts, starts. This forces that annual review and prevents ongoing payments for obligations that are not really there. Best practice number five. Make it part of the employee excess exit process that recurring subscriptions are checked for any recurring payments that may be being made for subscriptions for the employee who's leaving the organization. Sometimes the subscription will be changed to another employee and other times it will sometimes it'll simply be terminated. While this is a recommended practice in real life for whatever reason it's often difficult to get cooperation from HR. There is a related problem of canceling credit cards of employees who leave the organization but if you can get the cooperation it's certainly worth a shot at trying to get it. Now some of you are probably sitting there thinking that automation might help. It might eliminate the need for setting up recurring payments or making their verification much easier. And you would be correct. In fact, accounts payable automation, AP automation, invoice automation, whatever you want to call it, has become such a big part of the accounts payable process that we recently did an extensive program on that all important topic, which you can watch right now using the link that has appeared on your YouTube screen if you're watching it on YouTube and is in the description. Good luck.